been nothing but big fights for you for like the last four or five years or so, but I mean, you know. I need a vacation, man. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, does this fight week feel special, important, like a big moment in your life? Yeah, I have a very special to me because I have an opportunity to be the world champion. It gives me chills just saying it, you know. I want it so bad. This fight's very important to me. So it was so interesting, I thought, when you took the trilogy fight with Conor, right? Did you have to weigh in the fact that if for some reason I come up short, that world title fight's going away? Yeah, I knew that. Go going into that fight, in the back of my head, that was, you know, I'm gambling on myself. Every fight is a, is a roll of the dice, and, you know, no matter how prepared you are. What we do is a crazy thing. The sport is crazy. And, uh, but it all worked out. No doubt. Now you're here. Well, I mean, Charles obviously has a great story as well, great journey through, through mixed martial arts. What did you think when you saw him become champion? I mean, were you almost happy for him in a way? For sure, man. I've been watching that guy a long time. We've both been in the same waters, 45, 55, for the last decade in the UFC. And there's a list of guys that when they won the belt was really special to me, and he's on that list. You know, Bisbing's on that list. Robbie Lawler's on that list. Um, underdogs. The guys who, you know, of course, everybody's fighting against adversity, but the guys who were counted out a couple times and, and made it happen, and I'm trying to add my name to that list. That's the goal here this weekend. No question about it. it he's, he's obviously an absolute killer. You've been facing nothing but absolute killers, but when you look at him, is he more dangerous, less dangerous than some of the other guys you've been facing? There's so many variables. Um, when you're talking about dangers in, in mixed martial arts, he's just – He's as dangerous as any of the other top guys I've fought, just in different areas. You know, his, his submission game, numbers don't lie. He's one of the most dangerous, the danger, most dangerous ever to hit the canvas in the UFC. And we, we, we didn't put that aside in training camp. You know, we really focus on defense and uh, fight IQ on the ground and where I'm at in the rounds and risks we need to take. So, you know, he's very dangerous. Last thing for me, I mean, I guess it's this moment to enjoy it first, right? But what is your plan as champion, right? I mean, you've done everything. You fought everybody. Like, do you see, like, I'm going to win and have this long reign? Or is it like, man, I'm going to get there, and maybe that's about it for me? You know what I mean? What's, what's the plan? I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked that far. You know, I have to perform Saturday night and, and get that belt. And then we'll, see, we'll take it from there. But sitting here thinking about it, you know, I'll probably defend the belt. I, I do believe one day I'm going to fight at 170 pounds in the UFC. I'm not sure if I'm going to make – a title run, a career run, and you know, but I, I'm 32. I'll be 33 next month. I still feel good. I'm injury free. Uh, I feel healthy, so I, I can continue to do this as long as my body allows me, and I, and I feel good. But the goal is just to to put that world champion next to my name and cement that in history. That's that's all I'm really focused on. Dustin, right here. Uh, I, I think from the fans' perspective, a lot of people view Charles Oliveira as this high-level elite grappler, but lately he's been putting away a lot of people, or at least setting up submissions with his hands. You've obviously fought in, like, the Anthony Pettis's, the Holloways, the Connors. So how would you rate his striking compared to a lot of the other peoples in the division? He, uh, you know, he, he's dangerous. He throws big knees, big kicks, power shots. He, he keeps himself protected, throws a good sharp hook that he hit Chandler with. He does a lot of things well on, on the feet. Um, not a big volume puncher, not the best footwork, but very aggressive and not a point fighter. You know, he's trying to finish you. And then, I, I know you've touched on this a lot, but a lot of people think, even like the Justin Gates, you said that your will is just stronger than Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira, quote, breaks, but that was what, like five, four years ago when he broke against Paul Felder. Do you still view him as that same fighter? Is that always going to be there, or is that just so long in the past you can't even take that into consideration? I mean, if it's in there, we'll find out. But I can't bank on that, you know. Um, we'll see. He showed grit in his last fight against Chandler. You know, he got hurt, almost got finished, came back and knocked the guy out. So if that's, you know, your last fight is the one I go off of. And he showed championship grit. Dustin, back here, right in the middle. Uh, we saw an embedded. You were talking to your daughter through the video chat. Are they going to be here for the fight, the family, this week? They land today. This is my daughter's first fight week. Yeah, right. they land today. Cool. I was going to ask that kind of, is it stressful for you to have them or is it kind of more motivating, like distraction wise? How do you kind of view having them? No, I love my family and they come with me to training camp the whole time. And she was, she was actually born on the, on the day that Nate Diaz fought Connor. Um, I forget what UFC number that was, but we were in the hotel, in the uh, hospital room, rented it from UFC.com on my laptop, went pick up some, some food. You know, she was born into this. She, you know, I have a gym back home. She was raised in the gym, too. This is just life. It's not a big deal to her, you know. And I know that you miss Thanksgiving, so sorry to bring it up, but what's your favorite pie, man? 
<laughs> Damn, I like pecan pie, man. I really do. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to catch up on all that for Christmas. Yeah, there you go. Best of luck, Dustin. Hey, Dustin right here. Uh, Dustin, not only yourself, but you got two other Louisiana guys fighting on the card. Um, I mean, is that any extra motivation? I know they're not necessarily direct teammates, but do you feel like there is going to be a bit of setting the bar early for the South? Man, we got to put on for Louisiana for sure. I, I know both guys pretty well. Me and Matt actually have trained together for years and years and years. We were at the same gym for a while uh, in Louisiana. He came out to American Top Team. We were training together there. so. And I've been knowing him for a long time. I've cornered him before he made it to the UFC. So it's, it's good to see those faces and be around those guys on fight week. You know, we're a long way from the rodeo arenas we fought in in Louisiana. And to talk to you a little bit about other stuff going on in the lightweight division, um, just your thoughts on the other big fight coming up, Mahachev versus Benil Dariush. It's a fun matchup. You know, Dariush on, is on a streak. Mahachev is dangerous. Um, we'll get to see how his ground game, how good his ground game really is when they hit the mat. You know, obviously his wrestling's really good, but Darius is dangerous in all positions. It's a fun fight. You know, the, the lightweight division, has I've said it over and over again, been very top heavy for the last few years. And uh, it, it seems like it's not, not going anywhere. Is Justin Gaethje a different guy than when you fought him, in your opinion? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, it's tough to say. You know, I know a lot of people thought he made a huge jump when he fought Tony, and I, th I do think he is improving. I just think Tony made him look really good as well. It was a good matchup. But, no, nah, he's tough, man. He's tough. Final one. You've got the original. You've got the knockout edition. If you win the belt, is there going to be a championship edition hot sauce? Man, we're launching this week um, a three-pack with gold labels for championship week. It's not a different sauce, it's the same original sauce with gold labels. We're gonna do a limited run of 2100 because this is gonna be my 21st win in the UFC. And uh, $10 from every, every pack is going to the Good Fight Foundation. We're trying to raise money for Second Harvest Food Bank to provide 300,000 meals in Louisiana to underserved communities that need it. So yeah, we're trying to tie everything in together. Thank you and good luck. Yeah. Oh, right, so. um, your last two fights had a lot of kind of emotional buildup with Connor. How's this one different in terms of like your, your head space for this particular fight? It's, it's smooth sailing, you know, not a lot of back and forth. He seems respectful, but at the end of the day, it's a fight. You know, this is warfare when we get in there. So the more mature me, I don't really pay all that a whole lot of mind. Even in the Connor fights and the buildup, I didn't really get too caught up in it. I don't really care about that stuff anymore. I know what matters, so. Um, even if this was a crazy back and forth verbal exchange, it wouldn't, when the bell rings Saturday night, it's going to be the same result. Just to follow up to that, um, your wife was also involved in some back and forth. It, at least it got to her when you were fighting Connor. How's she doing with this particular fight? Is there a lot of relief in the house this time around? There wasn't any tension in the house before. Um, just like I said, when my daughter was born into this, my wife drove me to my first fight. I didn't have a car. She drove me across state lines to to Arkansas and I fought in a rodeo arena back in 2007 maybe. So she's been, she knows this game as well as it, you know, probably better than some people in the car. Dustin, hey, here in the, oh, sorry, here in the back. As you mentioned, there's a lot going on in the lightweight division and it seems like Justin Gaethje will be the next one to challenge after this. But there was a lot of talk about that. A lot of people felt Makachev deserved it. In your opinion, who is the most deserving lightweight to challenge for the title after this fight? I don't know, man. That's Dana, Sean, and Mick's job. I don't play matchmaker. I just try to put these guys away. Uh, like I said, it's top heavy. I, I'm not sure. You know, Gaethje had a title fight and then won one since then, right? Yeah. But he beat a guy coming. No, nah, Chandler was coming off a win, so. I don't know, man. It's tough. It's been murky waters. It's hard to, you know, pick who's next. And you mentioned moving up to welterweight in the future. Obviously, Colby Covington has had a lot of negative things to say about you, and that's where he resides. Is that a fight that interests you in the future? We'll see. I'm not sure how soon I'm going to make that jump, you know, especially if I become the world champion Saturday. I have to, you know, defend the belt, and I have to be here for a while and establish myself as a world champion. But, uh... Everybody's on the list if I move up, you know? Dustin down. 
uh, down here to your left. You touched on, obviously, the win being a 21st, if, if you get it. But I believe in January 1st will be the 10-year anniversary of you making UFC debut at UFC 125. 11. 11. 11 year. Oh, 11 year. I can't even count, man, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, how would you assess the journey? Because it, you've had ups and downs, and you picked yourself back up off the of a figurative canvas many times. So how would you assess the journey so far? Beautiful, man. Uh, a learning experience. It helped me become the fighter I am, but also the person I am. You know, I just hope I can pass on these lessons I've learned to my daughter, to other fighters in the future. You know, it, it's more than fighting. It's it's life lessons, and I'm just happy with the person I've become. And I know you're not one to overlook your opponents or whatever, but 